Good evening, everybody. Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome to Mark Monday. So glad to see 21 of you already on. I'm so happy. Sister Linda Robinson, you have the number one slot. And I see many of you have already said good evening. As you're coming in, please say good evening. Let us know where you're here from. You might meet a new friend in the chat. I know a lot of you, or at least I cyber know you. And I know Sister Cheryl is saying good evening and she's back in Little Rock. But I know I got this close to her this weekend. She was this close to me. This close. I hope you had a good time in the Metroplex, Sister Cheryl. And I'm glad that you had safe travels home. All right. We are here for our preview of this Sunday's lesson. And I double checked myself this time. I was checking and double checking. And this week we are reading about the river of life, the river of life. And we are going to Revelation chapter 22. The last two weeks we've had chapter 21. And now we're going into 22 here. I'm going to do something. All right. Please let me know that you can still hear me. Please let me know that you can still hear me. I forgot that I had that AirPod in and I don't want it in. So please let me know that you can still hear me, that I didn't mess up. Let me know that I thank you, Sister Ruthie. Thank you so much. All right. Wonderful. Let's go ahead. We're in Revelation chapter 22, verses one through seven. Y'all know what I'm going to say about seven verses of scripture. It seems like a short read and tonight may be a little quicker, but that just means that this week we are dealing with a beef rib. Um, so that means that there is a lot on here that we're going to be parsing through and need to figure out. And so it's going to be a very substantive week of study. Um, before I get into the lesson, I want to go ahead and say that on this, not this Saturday, the 27th, Saturday, the 27th of August, I hope that you marked your calendars and that you will plan to join me for a teacher appreciation. This year was not possible without an incredible team of people that helped to get work done, trying to manage you know, two different curriculums and to uh, produce material for everyone was far more than I could handle alone, especially with the world opening back up. And so um, at one point, remember, I came on, I was like, I can't do it. But there were people who got around me quickly and said, we're going to do this. And I want to celebrate those individuals and um, thank them for what they have done. I've actually already had individuals start to share um, with us because maybe their calendars conflict, but there is certainly a great appreciation for those individuals. So please plan to be there. Let's pray. And we're going to go ahead and read this week's lesson. Father, I love you so much. And I honor you and I bless you for being my God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you are for who you are to us. Thank you for what you mean to us. Thank you for how you're present for us. And thank you so much that you give us community. Thank you that you give us people that are around us. And together, God, we are individuals who are hungry for you and want more of you. But more than anything, we desire to be that bride that we studied about in yesterday's lesson. We take in this word because we want to know what it means to be pure and to live lives that make us desirable in your eyes. Bless us tonight as we are present here to study your word. Bless us as we preview this lesson and open up our minds, our hearts, our understanding. We don't want to speed read through a text, but we literally want to soak in your word and all week long allow your word to minister to us, God. Thank you that you give us this opportunity to grow us and to know the more of you. Bless everyone who's present now, even those who will catch the replay. We love you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. And he showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was there a, the tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, 
and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, these things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must be shortly done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. All right, let's go. Let's get ready. This is Markup Monday. And so if it's your first time in Markup Monday, I want you to know that this is not the teaching of the lesson. I'll be back later this week for the teaching of the lesson. And what we're doing tonight is simply a preview of this text. It is a preview of this text. That means that we're going to read it. We're going to make an observation. What do you see? What do you think about? What does it remind you of? What are you curious about? You know, what do you want to dig into this week? And Sister Evelyn Parker, uh -huh, I wrote your name down so that I would remember it was you who asked me, I'm going to do it this way for real this week, where I literally, like I printed it um, and I printed it in my my personal template, and I don't have anything written down. Um, she said that it was very helpful when I read kind of off the cuff with you all. And so I am not here as a teacher. I am reading along with you. So let's tonight, I'm watching you in the comments. I'm making my own observation. And then I am going to take this and it will become my personal study plan for the week. And that's what you should do with yours. Thank you so much. I see some other titles being popped in here. That's one of the questions I love to know. No better refreshment is, I like that one actually. And mine is the river of life. No better refreshment and the river of life. And good evening. I see you all as you all are coming in. Good evening. Don't forget. Click that thumbs up like button. Please do that. These, this content is still free and it lets YouTube know what you enjoy and it also helps. Also, y'all, let me just be honest with you. I think we, we ha we've had summer attendance here um, in the virtual space, kind of like a lot of churches have, like, like uh, attendance has been down. So as we're going into the new school year, as we're ramping up into September, make sure you're sharing this, sharing these videos, but more than anything that you're developing your own community. So get together with your friends, get together with your class and let's, let's get into this word together. All right. So here we go. One thing that I wanted to do before I even jump into anything this week is I want to look at this lesson aim, but because I am reading it with you for the first time, I want to know what this lesson is calling me to pay attention to. So there are three um, aims of this lesson. And one is that I will research the biblical lesson references to the river of life and learn what it means spiritually, symbolically, and what its material effect is on creation. So that's one. The second is that I will imagine God's provisions to be found in the river of life. What provisions do I think will nourish and heal people and the nations in the new Jerusalem and respond, third one is respond to the river of life through acceptance, faith, and entrance into the fullness of God's kingdom. So I don't know, you can tell me like, how are you feeling? And this is gonna help us kind of get into chapter 22 because we've done all of chapter 21, right? The last two weeks, we had the chance to go through 21. So kind of how are you, what did you think in chapter 21? How does that kind of feed where you are going in as we talk about this river of life? Um, I'll tell you, my class and I had like a beautiful discussion yesterday because we were looking at this beautiful picture, right, of the bride. But not only that, I told them that the last two weeks for me have meant not only like do I think about the fact that God has or is preparing, right, or has prepared this place. Like I believe that this place that Jesus said he was going to prepare a place for me. He didn't say how long the preparation would take. So in my mind, maybe preparation is even still happening. But at the time that it is ready, like it is very like I really connected with this idea of um, what it means for the bridegroom to make ready for me to know that there's nothing haphazard about what's happening in the new Jerusalem, in the new city. And so when we ended our class yesterday, it was like we were discussing like the desire, like I was saying in the end, the, when I read Revelation and when I read all of the beauty of it, and yeah, there's a lot of movement, sight, sound, you know, some people say some scary stuff, but the beauty that we've seen in the last two weeks literally makes me want to live my life in a way that responds right to that level of beauty. So I think I'm already kind of sitting inside of this beautiful picture, if you will. 
and a desire to know like what it means to like appreciate. Maybe that's where I'm trying to go. Because sometimes we get things and we don't appreciate what has been put before us. But I want to be able to live my life in a recognition in a way that appreciates what has and is being prepared for me. And that means to also for me, um, like when you've been chosen, like the, the lamb has chosen his bride, but every day, and I said this in class yesterday, I want to choose him back, right? I want to choose him and how I live. So that's kind of my backdrop coming into this lesson. Let me see what you're saying. Anybody having problems with the Bible Gateway app? I don't know about the app, Sister Cheryl. I use it on my computer, my laptop today. Anybody else have any? Oh, it wouldn't come up a few hours ago, Sister Max says, Sister Antoinette said. All right. Uh, Sister Cheryl says the two chapters feel like a door. Yeah, is being open. And I agree with you. You're like You get like this sight into something amazingly beautiful. I agree with that. Yeah, great anticipation for the arrival of the faithful, Dr. Amos. I agree with you. And Sister Marcy says, I want to share it with others. So I wanted to just kind of situate inside of that before we just go reading about what's next. From a background perspective, this is week number three in Revelation. So I already know that you know who wrote the book, book where he was, kind of what the audience is. And by now, I know that even when you started reading chapter 21, you went back several chapters. So I don't have this you know, expectation that we're going to go through kind of the basics. If you haven't done that in the last two weeks, go back. Welcome back to Sunday School. We're glad you're here. Go back and get caught up on that background. At least know where John is in this vision. Pastor Sandra says the preparation that the groom is doing and the bride's excited anticipation of him returning. Yes, Pastor Sandra. And it does remind me of the virgins that you know, who were not staying on guard and staying prepared and weren't ready when the bridegroom came back, right? Keep your limbs trimmed and burning. So I, yeah, that's where I am as I'm reading this. So let's go ahead because again, we just have seven verses of scripture. Um, if this is your first time on Markup Monday, by the way, welcome. Let us know in the comments that you're new. Say hello. Watch this love that's going to get around you. But again, we're not going to teach the lesson tonight. We're going to go in small tidbits and you're going to tell me what you see, what you think about, what it reminds you of, what it makes you want to know more about. Verses one and two. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the lamb in the midst of the of the street of it and on either side of the river there was a tree the tree of life and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare 12 men her fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Go ahead and I'm watching the comments. These are good meaty bones, Elder Kelly said. Absolutely. Let me know. I'm watching you in verses one and two. Let's go. Let's go. Remember, Sister Evelyn has me out here doing this off the cuff with you. So let me know what you see. And I'm doing the same. Um, and he showed me a river. I know here that I am dealing with John who is seeing something. When he says he showed me, I'm going to make an assumption. I uh, may not be right, but I know in chapter 22, when he was shown something, he was shown something by an angel. So I just need to go back and make sure is that what's going on here. But my suspicion is that this is an angel that's still, I told my class yesterday, like, I feel like Revelation is like a movie theater. Like the angel takes John, come here, look at this. Now come here, look at this. Now look up. I just feel like it's so action filled. So that's how my mind is working right now. Uh, there's this ever flowing river of life. Yes. Yes, Sister Antoinette. A river and no sea, Sister McLean. I see you there. Absolutely. Reverend Nelson says he showed me what is being revealed. Absolutely. So revelation, no pun intended, continues to take place. He continues to have things. I'm writing down the word revealed too. Thank you, Reverend Nelson, for that. Not just any river, but a pure river of water. Yes, Pastor Sandra, what does that mean? And I have, I really only have two colors tonight. I have this little pen here, but I really, it kind of bleeds through. So we're going to, I'm going to use my two colors. Someone has asked me before, what do the colors mean? They mean whatever I decide they mean when I'm writing. I'm a visual learner. So whatever pattern I start with, it only has to make sense to me. So tonight, purple, my favorite color is going to be the first one that I use. And I'm going to circle the words pure and clear and crystal. 
And that sort of reminds me of yesterday. I saw themes of purity, like even with the bride, I saw the purity of the bride. I saw purity in the streets of gold. Um, I saw purity, of even the precious stones, like there was a pure nature about everything. And that makes me think of like the quality of heaven in its totality and even the quality that he was looking for in his bride. Like when I see pure, I think not contaminated. I'm just writing down the words, not contaminated. River of life, uh, river, not a sea. Writing that down too, is not a sea. All right, Sister Powell says, John is out here painting a picture of something that no one has ever seen, like describing purple to a blind man. You are absolutely right. You are so right. Rivers make me think of provision, Elder Kelly. I like that. And this river, this provision, if you will, uh, Sister Nash has clear, yeah, thinking of purity, absolutely. And here is proceeding out of, because I guess we might want to ask, like, where does a river this pure, like this brilliant, that stands out in this way, that is captivating his attention? I'm showing you something else. Where is it coming from? Its origin, I'm just writing down the word, origin is out of the throne of God. Now, what this makes me think of, like whenever I read Revelation for me, like I, in my mind, there's like this focal point and the focal point is always the throne. And so I feel like my attention is being called back to this throne because in the last chapter, he's taken up on a high mountain, right? And he's shown this bride coming out of heaven from God. Now focus is being taken back to the throne of God. So I'm just going to call this the focal point. I laugh like that because when I say focal point, it always reminds me of HGTV. And like when you come in the room, they're like, well, we got to find the focal point. Where do we hang the TV? We need to know where the focal point is. So here's the focal point of heaven. It's the throne. All right. Flowing. The waters flow crystal clear and clean. Is it a, a river? A, a, a river or a fall, Sister Marcy is saying. The river is moving. Here go Wadi Morgan. Straight poetry. The river, there's movement here. Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely. Um, Pastor Sanders says, is the purity reflective of God since it's coming from his throne? I absolutely love that. Great question, Reverend Nelson. There is a list of to do. Uh, there is a list of of understanding. Type that again for me. Reverend Nelson, I don't know what I'm reading. Yet. It may be me. Tell me again what that is. Dennis Mackins, the first thing that scientists look for is water on other planets. Yes, because if there's water, there is life. You better bring the science on in here. Great science point, not only for our adults, but I um, am always encouraging you teachers to look for these STEM moments and STEM things that you can bring in. So yes, where there's water, there's life. I see a rainbow from the crystal. Uh, Sister Marcy says the stream is moving and flowing. Pastor Sandra says the of water of the throne of God of the Lamb. We have lots of ofs here. Thank you for calling that out. I'm going to circle all my ofs here. Uh, there's even a tree of life. Yeah, of the throne of God and of the Lamb. I just went ahead to verse two, Pastor Sandra. That's in the midst of it. All right, so and of God and of the Lamb, out of the throne of God. And I'm going to circle the word and. There are two focal points here. There's still, because the lamb was actually the subject of chapter 21, right? Because the lamb's bride had been prepared and was brought now to the lamb. So there is the, the uh, throne here and the lamb of God. All right. In the midst of it, and I assume that the it that we are now referencing back to is because we've been called to our attention to this, this river. So in the midst of the street of it, meaning, I guess, maybe let me think about what I see here in the midst of the street of it. Is this the city? Is this the river? What's the it here? I want to know. I want to figure that out. I didn't read in other other translations yet. Sister Evelyn asked me to just read it raw. So I'm going to identify my it. But in the middle somewhere here, another point of attention is this tree of life, the tree of life. And I've only seen a tree of life once before. That's just what it reminds me of. It reminds me of a tree of life that I remember from Genesis. May have nothing to do with this tree of life, but that's just what it reminded me of. All right. Um, the river makes me feel like the river of peace, Sister Linda Robinson says. And it does feel very peaceful and beautiful um, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river, interesting, there was the tree of life. 
here's where I see some more kind of repetition coming in. I see the number 12. There's 12 manner of fruits that yielded her fruit every, and I don't know if time is the same in heaven, but for this moment, because it's what it reminds me of, if it, if it yields fruit every month, uh, right now I am familiar with a 12 month calendar. So I'm just going to put that in there. Um, and the leaves had purpose. The leaves had a purpose healing the nations. And I already know that my one of my lesson aims wants me to figure out what it means uh, that the leaves had this quality to heal the nation. So I want to dig into what does it mean to heal the nations? What nations? Why do they need healing? What's wrong with them? What specifically is being healed? What is being healed? All right, I'm coming up for air here to read what you're saying here. Uh, in the passage, there is a lot of the word of. Yes, okay, of is a genitive. Gen gen genitive. I looked that word up, Reverend Nelson. You just you just used a word on me. But yes, you and Pastor Sandra both called out all of the ofs. Yes, lots of ofs. Please make sure you're circling those in verses one and two. The tree of life with 12 fruits yielding every month, ever bearing fruit. Thank you. I did not circle that part. It yields every month. And it's it's bearing all always. I guess that's a good way to say that. It's all it's always producing. Now that is unique, right? Because what is always producing? What what do we know that produces year around? Hmm? All right. So it's good year around. It makes fruit year around. Uh, Hosea Long, a single tree stands on each side of the river. Wow, God's omnipresence. I love that. Yes. The tree of life. Is this the Genesis tree, Reverend Nelson? See, I was asking a good question there. You gave me a new word, but I'm asking good questions over here. Uh, why do they need healing, Sister Carolyn? Absolutely. Sister Patrice, it feel, really feels as if you can draw the picture. Yeah, I agree with that. I kind of want to sit here and draw this out too, that you could draw out because he does get such detail. And I think it was Sister uh, Cheryl that said that like he is describing this in a way that like even a blind man can kind of like kind of have imagination in his mind because there is such detail. The tree in the Garden of, e of Eden of life in the New Jerusalem, Brother Donald, I think we're all agreeing that that's what we think we see. That's all I really have on verses one and two. Again, I know nothing is this simple because it's seven verses. So I know I know there's something in here. So we'll keep digging. Last week, Reverend Nelson says we talked about wiping away every tear. Yeah, so why do we still see healing that is needed? And Reverend Nelson, I was even talking about in yesterday's lesson like that, like even with the walls, like if I think about like walls, even though we're saying that their enemy was no longer present and yet now there's healing needed, even though there are no more tears. I think these are all very interesting things. Um, you keep looking at a singular tree, Sister Carolyn. So I think that's where we get to kind of dig in. Are we talking about a sing single tree or are we talking about a tree on each side of the river? Um, I think, again, read different translations. I have not done that. I will read in at least three. Uh, I have King James. I love New Living Translation. I will read in the Amplified Bible. Those will be my three for sure. Um, and we'll see where we end up on this. Verse three, Sister Cheryl says, genitive means relating to or denoting a case of nouns and pronouns and words in grammatical agreement with them, indicating possession or close association. Yeah, that is now. I usually say ACT words, Sister Cheryl. This is a grad school word right here. Yeah. That's because Reverend Nelson, he's smart. And you know what? Pastor Sandra was all on that. With, they seem like some seminarians over here hanging out with us. I think that's what they're doing. Us. They semina they're seminarying us. I love it. I love it. Y'all raise the standard over here. That's what we're doing. Good evening, Evangelist Glenn. Good evening. Verse three and four. Verses three and four. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. All right. This is why we can only handle seven verses because we're about to, I feel like this is the put your seat belt on because see verses one and two, whereas they have uh, some colorful elements to them and we can kind of imagine this river and it's flowing out of the throne of God. Well, now here we go. We're talking about curses and, and marks on foreheads and let's see what we're doing. Let's see what we're doing. All right. All right. So what was will not be. What was will not be. All right. So no more curses. I'm just curious. What was the curse that we were referring to before? Yeah, that's the $100 word. I see you, Pastor Sandra. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you, Sister Benita. No more curse. What does that mean? What was the curse before? What does it mean that there is no more curse? What is the advantage, right? Because everything that's happening here creates this beauty of like, Kind of bad stuff is gone. Good stuff is here. So what is what is what has been the bad stuff? What has been that difficulty, Doctor Amos? Uh, that we may have confidence in the truth of the Lord. All that the Lord has said about preparing this place. John is witness to these things for our believing faith until we arrive. And Doctor Amos, it's interesting that you say that because yesterday one of the things I asked my class was, do we like even look forward to this anymore? Like. I honestly, I don't hear people talking about heaven as much as I did when I was a kid. Like my great grandparents and my grandparents, not only did they mean Jesus all the way, but baby, they wanted to go to heaven and they would sing songs like I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. So see the praise and worship team doesn't sing. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad anymore. Uh, you know, I know that my class at Kirk Franklin, they were thinking about if you want to know what heaven looks like. We just got us a heaven song released this year with Kirk Franklin in Maverick City. But when I was coming up, they used to talk about heaven a whole lot. And I think it was that it's this anticipation of this beautiful place that we should hold on to until we get there. Review Genesis 3 this week, Sister Cheryl is telling us, and we've already made some assumptive connections to Genesis. So go to Genesis 3. Uh, everything, yes, is going to be new. Sister Patrice says, oh, thank you. Click that thumbs up like button because she's saying only 57 of you have done that. And it's over 100 of you in this room. Hey. All right. Uh, let's see here that there may have been a tree of life. Okay. Yes. Okay. Elder Kelly, I see the tree of life may have, uh, since the fall brought the effects of the curse in Genesis. Thank you. Genesis three. If this is the conclusion, understanding will come from what happened in the beginning. Absolutely. So no more curse. All right. But something different, the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it. There's that throne of God and the lamb again. So their curse is gone, but the throne of God and the lamb still there, still standing, still present. All right. Let me see what you're saying. The curse should be done away with. All right. Um, and his servants shall serve him. Servants who are his servants. They are present, but they just not up there chilling. They have a job to do. What does it mean to serve him? And his servant shall serve him. Uh, verse four, not only are they going to serve him, but they're also, they assume are the servants are going to see his face. And I'm very curious on that because that's something that hasn't been able to be happened before. You know, when I think about seeing his face and we talk about that, right? I'm going to see him face to face. I'm going to see him as he is. But nobody else been able to see him face to face before this point, right? I'm only thinking about right now, like, you know, like when uh when Moses, right, asked, can you show me your face? Mm-mm, no, turn your back to the rock. Just I'm gonna pass by because you can't handle seeing my face. So I'm just that's what this is reminding me of. May or may not be right right now, but this opportunity, something glorious, and this has to be beautiful to see his face. Oh, I want to see him. Look up on his face. Yeah, I came up in one of those churches. Yes, I did. All right. So yeah, this feels beautiful. It also feels for me, um, it, this is a wow. Like I'm, I'm kind of cutting up a little bit tonight, but I do think about, I think about the awe factor of heaven. And a lot of times, like I'm thinking people are like, oh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God about this. I'm gonna Apparently, no, we're not. Apparently, this place is so beautiful and so overwhelming and so awing that we're not going to have this chance to be coming up. I need to know why this happened. What? No, no. So this feels like a moment of awe for me uh, to see his face and his name. His name shall be on their foreheads. I want to know what, what, that, what that marking means. Why is the marking important? Is it meaningful? Is it important? All right. Let me see what you're saying. All right. That's what we're going to be doing, Pastor Sandra says. I see the curse information. The water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Now you have God, the Lamb, and the Holy Spirit. Dennis Mackins, his face will no longer, uh, will he no longer be a spirit, Sister Faye is asking, to truly worship him, praising a big celebration, Sister Stephanie. Hey, Elder Whitaker, there will be no more temptation from Satan, right? The enemy is actually destroyed. Uh, we will be in a new body, Sister Marcy. Oh, so much I can say about that. 
Um, let's see here. I see you, Sister Linda. Glorification yields access. Right, Sister Angelique. That is beautiful. Uh, the fact that even we will not be the same, that we... And I will say this, because somebody's already mentioned it, like it being in a new body, Sister Marcy says. Um, I was listening, quite frankly, to Elder Payton. I think um, I was on a plane. This must have been last week. I was on a plane when I just happened to like log in at the end of um, his teaching of Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 8. And I made a comment because like I have like I've been processing this because this is, you know, what thinking about our own like mortality and not just like seeing Jesus, but thinking about how we live. But also it kind of made me think about this idea, you know, when we say like, I'm going to see my, my father again, I'm going to see my grandfather again. And I was like, I don't, I don't know that I really believe that I'm going to see them again. I believe, I think in this like unification of spirit that will happen. But I also feel like so overwhelmed by the idea of the throne of God that to me, like everything that I'm reading is so brilliant and so commanding that I don't know that I will have capacity to be like, well, can you show me where my daddy's mansion is? Like, because for me, when I'm feeling this, the way I feel as I read it, like all the attention is on the throne and on the lamb and of the splendor of what's going on. So that's just kind of, my mind has kind of been swirling in that way as I've read this series of lessons. So God is sitting on the throne, Sister Nash, um, and we read about it over and over. Yeah, it is so beautiful. Pastor Sandra says we won't have the mind, yeah, to think of all the junk that happened on this ball of dust. That is powerful. Yeah, because we're going to be too busy praising and worshiping the true God. What a beautiful time of glory. Uh, Sister Cheryl says, I heard someone say we'll understand 45 when we get to heaven. I want to say, baby, we won't care. <laughs> I see what you're saying. No more seeing. Absolutely. And no more illness, Alzheimer's, none of that. You know, in heaven, we won't have any of that. Um, so what? Sister Cheryl, what are you talking about? I did nothing. I'm just telling you how I felt. I, was just, I thought this was a safe space. I came with a blank sheet of paper. And I'm just expressing myself. Mercy. Yeah. Evangelist Lynn, thank you for rescuing me from that ice cream situation. This ball of dust. Huh? I got to love that. I think Pastor Sandra and Reverend Nelson are the ones on here who give me ice cream. And I don't think it's me. Let me keep going. Verse five. I got verse five by itself. And there should be no more night there. They need no candle, uh, neither light of sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Um I'm just going to call this what I understand to be like measurement of time. Maybe that's not the best way to do it, but that's what I'm thinking. Because for me, you know, day and night, those are kind of very clear times of day for me. Uh, but we won't know, we won't be able to differentiate days like that. It will just be an eternal existence um, that they will not need a candle and neither light of sun. I'm going to call these sources of light. I won't need man's source or natural sources because the Lord himself is the source of light. He's the one who gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Who is they? That's the King James. I want to know who is they. Is they the, 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 is it God and the lamb? Is they the people? See, this is they sitting here. So make sure you know who they is. Who is they that will reign forever? Yes, Sister Linda, he is light. Uh, Minister Elder Roy, why do old habits die hard? Let me just make you a bishop so I can quit tripping over here. All right, no need for the sun because the sun is the sun. He is the source. Never ending light given by God, Sister Antoinette. Evangelist Glenn says, yes, he is the source of light. He is the source of light. Uh, I'm just going back just for a second here. I'm going back to the lesson aim. I'm just making sure there wasn't anything about the light in the lesson aim. Imagine God's provision to be found in the river. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, what's in the river of life that will nourish and heal? Thank you. And respond. Okay, got it. All right, nothing about the light. The light just kind of stood out to me in verse five. Not important to the lesson aim. Okay, these are earthly bodies. Uh, need day and night. Our new bodies don't need these things in verse five. And I think that's interesting that, as you called it, this ball of dust, the stuff that we need now, that these things that we depend on um, to be able to know and measure, uh, really day and night is really about measuring more time. And there is no need to measure times of day because this we're inside of an eternity. I'm going to write that word down. I wrote down eternity. It's time. All right, let me move on for Sister Cheryl starts asking for ice cream. 
six and seven. And he said unto me, these are faithful, these faithful sayings, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must be shortly done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This kind of feels, I know this is not the end of the chapter, but it feels kind of summary-ish in nature. So he said unto me, I want to make sure I know who is he? Is this the angel speaking? Because the angel's been doing most of the talking anyway. Um, but he's saying that these sayings are faithful and true. What sayings? What sayings? And what does it mean to be faithful and true? How do we know what we can trust? How do I know what is faithful and true? How do I know what to trust? All right. And I guess the way I'm kind of feeling about just this with, this is faithful and true. This is actually real. So when you know that something is faithful and true, then that means it, for me, it's a challenge to take what you have seen and take what you know, and now do something with the fact that you believe that it is true. Um, so that's kind of how I'm processing the first part of verse six. Um, the, okay, nothing new. I'm sorry. That was Pastor Sanders' last comment. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servant the things which must be shortly done. I think that this is like amazingly reflective of God's nature. That his love is always sort of keeping in front of us like hope and promise and a future. Like that's how that makes me feel. Um, so I'm writing down the words hope, promise, future. And he shows his servant these things, which must be shortly done. I'm going to circle the word must. It's a requirement. It's going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. Verse 21 has the verse five connection. Sister Patrice says, faithful and true. Faithful and true. Revelation verse five connection. Faithful and true. I see you. Yes. Um, in the end. Oh, yes. We shall be made alive. That was my first TikTok video for the Aaron. That's my first TikTok. Go back and check it out. I mean, I was doing my good leading of the song. Yes, I was. We shall be made alive. It reminds me how Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Uh, verse, uh, Sister Sandra, Pastor Sandra says, we will also put on some of the characteristics of God, such as, will we also put on the characteristics of God, such as eternality? We want to live with him in eternity, but to do that, we must also put on eternality. A thought-provoking question. I love that. Um, it ain't too good to be true. Absolutely, Elder Kelly. It's not too good to be true. And I just think it's beautiful that he shows his servants. He's not keeping it a secret. Y'all hear me say that often. Like, God is not trying to hide them all from us. And he gives even his servant this, and we have this. And so he gives this to his servants so that we are aware. Like, he's not trying to catch us off guard. Uh, verse 7. Behold means to look. Pay attention. I come quickly. I come quickly. Well, I don't know if I have this part right, but how that makes me feel is if he says I come quickly, this makes me feel like get ready, stay ready. I'm sorry. So you don't have to get ready. If he's coming quickly, we don't get a chance. To, hold on. I, I, I know you're coming right now, but hold on. No, like I'm coming quickly. I come quickly. So when he comes, we need to be in this state of preparedness. And that just for me, like this takes me back to yesterday's lesson where I talked about the fact that this bride has been chosen by the groom. Her job in the, in the time of engagement or betrothal, whatever you want to call it, is to keep herself in a ready state to be received. Like generally, like, you know, most folks are not trying to mess up in the engagement, in the waiting period. That's what engagement is. In the waiting period, you already know you've been chosen. Keep yourself in a way that there's nothing that messes up the fact that this has all been prepared. So that's how this makes me feel. Like, don't do anything. Stay ready. You don't have to get ready. Yes. Uh, Bless is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. I don't think anything deep and spiritual about that, uh, except uh, I'm going to circle the word keepeth. Maybe there is something in here. Blessed is he that keepeth what's in this book. 
Not blessed is he who gets the most, the best motivational speaker. Not blessed is he who has the best portfolio. Not best is blessed is he who gives the most to charity, but blessed is he who keepeth. And for me, keeping is active. It takes something on our part to keep the sayings of the book. It takes something on our part to keep ourselves in a ready state. So maybe that's how that makes me feel. That's all I got. We got a week ahead of studying, y'all. So let's get it in. I will be back at the end of this week. And it's third Sunday. So you're stuck with me as your teacher for this week. So I will be ready. I'll be ready. Yeah, I'm getting ready. So I'll be ready. But I can't wait to do that. Again, don't forget. On August 27th, I do want you to join me for the teacher appreciation for all those who have helped. If you want to be someone who comes on camera and actually talks to any of or maybe your favorite teacher, send me an email. I'll invite you on. Send me an email at that Sunday school girl at gmail.com and you'll have a chance to meet and greet. I'm going to choose a few folks to just come online live and talk with those teachers and share the time. I love y'all so much. Got to run. I got a second video right behind this one. Y'all know how we get down. So I'm headed over to Team Kojic. I love you. Kid Packs will be up tomorrow. Have a super fantastic week. I'll see you later this week. Bye.